I'm Jen van der Hoven, Director of the National Horizon Centre. Thanks for joining us today for In Conversation with the NHC, where we talk to key leaders about current and future challenges and opportunities in the bioscience and healthcare sectors. So today in our first episode, I'm joined by Steve Bagshaw, who's the Manufacturing Lead of the UK Vaccine Task Force. So hi, Steve, welcome to the first In Conversation with the NHC. So do you just want to start by telling us a little, about, little bit about yourself and your career to date and how you've ended up in your current role? Sure, I spent most of my time on Teesside in the last uh, 20 years um, with Fujifilm Dyson's Biotechnologies. Um, I came there after I'd um, started in Huddersfield and worked my way around the world through Manchester, Boston, Massachusetts, and landed in Teesside in 2004 um, in the Avicia Biologics business and worked my way through a number of roles and ended up leading the site and then leading the um, business in 2014 as we went global uh, with American sites and eventually we also ended up with a Danish site as well. And I stepped aside last April and as I was stepping aside from that role, uh, I was asked by the Vaccine Task Force whether I would join them and um, have been on the manufacturing team for, the, for a year and just recently started to get myself ready to take over as the manufacturing lead in April of this year. Great. So I guess following on from that and the work you're doing on the task force, what are the kind of current challenges that the UK faces in vaccines manufacturing, kind of in terms of research, um, opportunities to collaborate and manufacturing capacity? Well, I mean, this is something that you can see through the news as to what the major challenges are. How do you get enough material for the, for us to jab arms with basically and not just jab the arms of UK people but around the world we're all looking for that sign of hope that is a vaccination now and all of that's got to get, be manufactured somewhere uh, it's got to be made and then it's got to be put into vials so the biggest challenge the UK has is just keeping that supply chain rolling towards making sure that the in initial cohorts are all vaccinated then you get to the younger folks and we want to make sure that we've got everybody vaccinated by the summer and then to play our role in the international scene too in terms of making sure that we've got enough vaccine to vaccinate the world because until we've vaccinated people in every country we know that we'll not be out of the crisis we're in. So if you look at what the challenges for us are um, in manufacturing the, the issue is that this time last year no one was planning to manufacture COVID-19 vaccines so you've got a whole group of people who have had to step up um, and the only way they've been able to do it is to collaborate together. So if you look at the story of the Oxford vaccine, it's about collaboration uh, in terms of bringing together um, a whole network of players who've gone from almost having no start at all this time last year to now being in full production um, as, you, as you see in the news um, in terms of supplying not just this country but around the world. Um, and, and that's the, the it continues to be the challenge going forward is how do you keep that up when you're working with people who are bringing online new facilities. So you've got all the approvals that go with that and all the difficulties you've got of multi-site manufacture of biologics, which any of you who've ever worked in the biologics world will know that just getting um, consistency of supply from one site is a really big challenge um, to establish a new drug or a new vaccine. If you have multi-site production of the same vaccine, then you have to get, um, obviously you, you, you've got to get comparability between the, the sites. And so that continues to be the issue in terms of numbers of vaccines. So we've now got a third vaccine approved for this country. So Moderna joined the, the vaccination now. Um, so that's another supply chain. Of course, around the world, you've got a um, number of other vaccines that are very close to being approved as well. So we could end up in the uh, autumn of this year with six, seven or even eight different vaccines. And that includes the Russian vaccine and the Chinese vaccines as well, which will take you into double figures um, of vaccines that we've got to get out manufactured to specification, safely approved and all going into the arms of people. I'd say that was the challenge that we're facing right this minute. And do you think that the UK has the manufacturing capacity that it needs at the moment, or do you think we need to rapidly bring on board more, more capacity in that area? Um, in terms of what we've managed to do with the contracts we've got at this moment, we're bringing online capacity. You'll have seen from the news that um, as well as AstraZeneca and the Pfizer-BioNTech and now Moderna just being approved, that obviously on T side we've got the 
um, vaccine being manufactured uh, by Fujifilm Dyson's. We've got another one up in Livingston, Scotland, being manufactured up there. So we're bringing online capacity. We've also invested in the Vaccines Manufacturing Innovation Centre at Harwell near Oxford, um, and that'll be coming online at the end of this year into next year. That's about pandemic readiness. It was approved in 2017, 2018, and is coming online. Sadly, it wasn't three years earlier, so that it would have been online before this pandemic and it would have been ready. But it is all about bringing capacity online now and making sure that we've got enough capacity um, to meet the needs of not just this first wave, but also any variants that come our way, any revaccination that's required, and continuing to supply vaccines to the world. Okay, and with this kind of increase in manufacturing capacity, what are we going to do about getting the people who can actually work in these facilities that have the skills that they need? I mean, that's a great point. And, and I think if you look around the country, there are, um, you know, there are great centres of bio, biopharmaceutical manufacturing in this country. And so the training is a, is a crucial part of it. The, the supply of skilled resources is going to be one of the next five year issues. And that's not just about training manufacturing people. It's about training all the other ancillary skills that go with manufacturing. Plus, if you look at what's got us to this position, clearly the fact that Oxford and back in this time last year, Imperial, were right at the forefront of creating the new vaccines for the world. You've got to have research um, people too, who are just world leading. And so that whole range of people that, um, very exciting opportunities really, because there's so many different things you can do that are to do with bringing vaccines to market or bringing therapeutics to market um, from the front end research all the way through to the whole supply chain skill set that you need. Yeah, great. So I guess just another couple of questions for you. So what are the lessons that you think we can learn from the recent COVID um, and sort of what other areas could we apply them to in terms well, of brand challenges? Well, I think collaboration is the biggest. If you look at the way in which the UK has performed in terms of, of, of um, responding. There's no doubt that one of the things that set us off well in the first three months was the collaborative approach that we took between research, academia, um, between government and industry. Bringing those three together was really, really important right at the front end. And so if we learn nothing else, we've got to keep that triangle of, um, of connectedness, if you like. Um, Speed and pace is the other thing. I mean, it's unbelievable the pressure you are under in a pandemic situation. And that's created some really impressive um, ways in which we've worked through some of the issues that for years and years and years, we've taken it for granted that it's gonna take you eight years to get from having a, a construct to approving. And we did it in just over eight months. Uh, I mean, that's just awesome in terms of what we've done. So going from sort of eight years to eight to eight months is something that we've now got to look at and say, well, how do we replicate that with um, drugs that matter, uh, against diseases that matter? How do we use that speed and that ability to concentrate on what really matters um, in, a, in, in, a, in a Gantt chart or in a plan so that you can make sure that you bring to market the kinds of things that do make a difference to patient health which is what this is all about. It's all about getting patients healthy. And for once in our lives, the whole world knows now what it means about manufacturing, about supply chains, about lumpy supply. You hear people over your garden fence talking about the supply chain issues of getting vaccines. I mean, wow, who'd have believed? Well, let's, let's just work on that and also inspire kids that this is something they should be getting involved in because it's so, it is such an exciting world to take your career into too. And I think that's, you know, here's an NHC conversation we're having, Jen, and I think that's one of the, the, the real roles the NHC can play in here is just offering an avenue in which not only to train staff, but also to inspire people um, in the region that this is something they can do and offer them a way in which they can get involved in this industry. Um, so I think, you know, you've got, you've got a big role to play as well. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Steve. It's been great to chat to you and we look forward to hearing more about the UK Vaccines Task Force as you take up your new role. My pleasure. Thank you.